In this tutorial, we're going to walk you through all you need to know to creating a Photo VCarve project. To begin with, we'll run through the concepts of the toolpath along with practical tips for best results, and then we'll jump into the software to show you how to create a Photo VCarve toolpath and walk you through all of the options that are available in the form. So let's first start by looking at some of the basic concepts and how to get the best results when creating a photo vCarve project. So let's talk about what photo vCarving is. So the photo vCarve toolpath uses a vBit tool to etch a picture into the surface of your material. And the photo vCarve toolpath creates lines of grooves that vary in width and depth to represent the detail in a photograph or an image. And the quality of the finished result is very dependent upon the high level of contrast between the material surface and the machined grooves, which is very important to remember when cutting designs with this toolpath strategy. The Photo VCarve toolpath machines dark areas in a photograph with wide grooves and the lighter areas have narrower grooves and the software automatically calculates the toolpaths based on the cutter selected and the maximum depth of groove required. Now a good Photo VCarve application is quite an art form and the ideal settings change depending on your tool bit, the wood type and colour, the photo itself and the accuracy of your CNC machine. So let's take a look at some tips to creating a good Photo VCarve. And so the material that you carve or engrave must be flat otherwise the grooves will not be machined at the correct depth relative to the surface. So it's a good idea to surface your wood and since photo V carving is so sensitive to changes in material height it's always good to first do a thin pocket cut over the whole piece of the wood to make sure that it's perfectly perpendicular to your cutting bit. The table or the bed of the machine must also be flat and we recommend that it's skimmed flat or a sacrificial board is stuck onto the table surface and then skimmed flat. Sharp bits are important as a blunt bit will cause more wood to come out with a furry texture and this goes for any CNC carving of course. Then you want to use a wood that does not have a strong grain. The strong grain can mar the final results and make it hard to see the carved detail. Tighter grains provide much better results. And so preparing and finishing a photo v-carve machine design is critical to how the finished piece will look. As you can see from the images, a high degree of contrast between the material surface and the machined grooves is essential, otherwise the effect will not be very prominent or visible. And so cutting a design into a very light material such as wood or plastic will require the grooves to be painted or stained with a dark colour, otherwise the end results will not look the way it should. And so you want to use a dark paint or stain to create that contrast. And sealing the wood post cut using a varnish or lacquer will help ensure that your paint doesn't bleed into the grain, as well as making it easy to remove the excess paint. Once your seal is dry, simply apply a dark stain or paint and then wipe the excess off the surface and this will leave dark grooves that contrast with the material surface and really brings the design to life. Alternatively, you could carve the design detail directly into the material, paint or spray the complete job with the dark contrasting colour and then use a sanding machine to clean off the top surface leaving the grooves dark. And for more information on the practical tips in creating a good photo VCarve project then I highly recommend that you head over to the Vetric forum and take a look at the photo VCarve section and you can access that by going to forum.vetric.com. So let's go into the software and we'll take a look at the photo VCarve toolpath. So here we're going to go ahead and create a new file working with a single sided job going to have a width of 10 inches, a height of 7 inches and the material thickness we're working with is 1 inch. We're going to set our Z0 position on the material surface. XY datum position is in the lower left hand corner and then we can go ahead and just simply press OK. 
So the first thing that you want to do is bring in your photo or image uh, that you'd like to use to apply the Photo VCAF toolpath strategy onto. So here we're going to go to import bitmap and in the project folder I have a picture of a happy couple. Okay, so we've got that image, we're just going to size it, so I'm just going to make that uh, just a little bit smaller than my job space. Okay, so you can see we've got a nice high quality image, that's also important here, you want to use high quality, high resolution images for best effects. And so with that, that's pretty much all we need to set up just to show you some basic examples of the photo VCAF strategy. We can now switch over to the toolpaths tab. So let's just go into our material setup. Okay, so your material thickness is one inch, XY date and position is in the lower left. We're setting our Z zero off the surface of our material and, and we're ensuring that we are using flat material and that our CNC bed is also flat so we get best results when creating our grooves from the Photo VCarve toolpath. Okay, you want to check over your rapid seed gaps above the material, clearance and plunge uh, is safe and appropriate, Z gap above the material, let's just make that a quarter of an inch in there and then we could go ahead and press OK. So let's select our image and then we're going to go into the Photo VCarve strategy. So we're going to start by looking at the top section of the form. So this is all about our cutting depths. So to start with, we need to specify a start depth. In this case, I want that on my material surface at zero. So we're going to leave that at zero. Now, if you was making a project that say you wanted to pocket out an area and then do a photo VCAF strategy inside of the pocket, then you must remember to enter the pocket depth uh, for the start depth here. Next up, we have the maximum carving depth. And say the maximum carving depth is the maximum depth that the tool will cut into the material. And it also impacts the number of lines that can be carved into a job. And so typically for a job of this size, uh, the deeper the cut, the lesser lines that we'll have. And cutting at shallower depths will create more lines, which in turn pulls out more detail. But like I say, this is all comparable to the actual size of your image. So you may want to play around with different cut depths and seeing what they look like in the toolpath preview for best results. Then we move on to the step over retract. So here we specify how much the tool we retract before moving on to the next line. So ideally you want to set this to a value that's high enough to allow the tool to move safely to the start of the next line, but also as low as possible to avoid slowing down machining time. So in this case, we'll just go with a step over retract of 0.1 here. And then we move on to the tool. So we can use the select option here. And here we're going to specify a V-bit tool. So I'm just going to use the 60 degree quarter inch in this case. And then we can use the select option here. So next up, we can choose from three different strategies to cut this in. We have raster, we have hatch, and we have selected vectors. And we'll look at each option throughout this tutorial. To start with, we're going to look at the raster option, and this will create a single set of parallel lines across the image that we've got selected here. And so with the raster strategy selected, we're able to further control what happens here by adjusting the line spacing along with the line angle. And so the line spacing we can control using this slider where we can switch from dense to sparse. And so the dense option will create tighter lines and therefore creating a denser image. And because we'll be cutting lots of lines, it will naturally take longer to machine. And then if we switch over to sparse, uh, then that has the opposite effect. Uh, and that's where we're cutting the lines further apart, which will result in a very sparse image. Yet it would be quicker to machine. And the line spacing is expressed in percentage of the tool width at maximum carbon depth. 
and so at 100% the line spacing creates the maximum definition or resolution based on the specified depth and then increasing that line spacing reduces the number of lines and increases the width of the flat regions on the material surface. So we're going to start by looking at the effect of the uh, dense option for the line spacing. And we can move on to the line angle. So this slider here enables us to adjust the angle of the lines that we'll be creating. Where zero will be cutting horizontal lines, 90 degrees will cut vertical lines, and then anything in between, so 45 degrees, will cut parallel in this direction, and then a negative 45 will cut parallel in this direction here. So we're just going to go with 45 degrees just to see what this looks like. And so with all of those settings, we can give that a name and we can just simply go ahead and press calculate. Okay, so the software will just calculate that for us and then we can take a look here in our preview toolpath. So let's just take a look at what we've got here. Okay, so you can see we've got a series of lines in a 45 degree angle like what we specified in the form. You'll see that we have a series of retracts. So this is our uh, step over retract distance here that we specified. And so every time it does a line, it's going to lift up and move on to the next line and come back down. We also have some retracts here. So areas that are here must be very light that it doesn't require uh, machining into. Uh, and so at this stage, we could just go ahead and preview that. So let's just preview that toolpath. Okay, so that's what it would look like if it was to cut it. If it was to stain it, we could look at using uh, the toolpath color option and we could just put a black in there uh, to really see what our part looks like. Okay, so you can see that we've got uh, quite a lot of detail in there. We can still make out the couple and this really is uh, a really good effect and this would make uh, for some really interesting gifts. So let's just go back into the toolpath and we'll look at making some changes to the line spacing and the line angle just to see the effect that it has on our image. Now in the preview that we've got here, it was created on the basis that we specified a dense line spacing and we can see that it's really pulled out all of the detail in the image. And the dense option works perfectly for something of this size. If on the other hand you were working with large scale projects then you'll probably get a good effect by increasing the line spacing. As looking at the finished part from a distance would probably pick up all the small details where the lines are further apart. And so if we increase the line spacing for a small scale project like we're working with here then it's probably not going to give you the desired effect. So let's have a look at the effect of this if we just increase that just to say 233%. We'll also adjust the line angle so we'll bring that down to zero just so you can see uh, the effect of a horizontal pattern and then we could go ahead now and press calculate. Okay, so we can see straight away the lines are much further apart and if we reset that preview and then go ahead and preview that you can see that we now have a horizontal pattern uh, and our lines are much further apart and because they're so far apart we're actually losing quite a lot of detail. You can sort of see uh, the two people in the image here, however it's not as detailed as it was before and so for something of this small scale size you're better off going with the denser line spacing option. So let's just reset that preview. I'm just going to go back into the Photo VCarve toolpath. And if we just set uh, the settings back to what we had earlier, so 100% line spacing, 45 degree angle, we'll just go ahead and calculate that and then we'll preview that. Uh, we can just take a look at this kind of perfect uh, result here. So this is at a cut depth of 0.05. Now if we double click on that and just change that, so if we increase uh, the carving depth we're going to get much wider cuts. So let's see the effect of that, so we'll calculate that 
and then we'll just reset that preview and then preview our toolpath and you'll see there that we have much uh, wider and deeper cuts there and again uh, you can kind of make out the two people but I think the setting that we had before was uh, much more appropriate for what we're trying to get out of this toolpath here. Okay, so here I'm just showing you different settings and this is the really nice thing about this preview and this toolpath is that we can make minor adjustments um, to the toolpath and just constantly preview it here in our preview toolpaths form uh, to find the optimum settings before we go ahead and cut that on our machine. So let's just go back into that toolpath. We're going to alter the maximum carbon depth and just take it back to 0.05. And now we're going to look at the hatch option. So if we select the hatch option there, and so this option will create two sets of parallel lines at 90 degrees from one another and creating a denser image. So here we'll just go with the hatch option, dense line spacing, and here again we'll just go with a 45 degree angle and so that will create a set of lines this way and it will also create a set going at negative 45 degrees. So let's go ahead and preview that. So here we'll just reset that preview and then we can preview this toolpath. So here is the one set of lines and it's going to go across and create the other set. And so you can see we've got quite an effective result there. And it's worth noting that this toolpath will take twice as long to carve as we have double the amount of lines as opposed to the raster strategy. Okay, so let's just reset that preview and we're just going to double click to go back into our toolpath. So now we're going to look at the selected vectors option. So with that selected, you'll see that I'm no longer able to adjust line spacing or line angle. And that's because it's all dependent on the vectors that you're using. So we need some vectors in order for us to create uh, this strategy here. And this strategy can create some really interesting effects. So let's have a look at two examples. So we're going to switch over to the drawing tab. We'll go into the 2D view here. And the first vector pattern we're going to look at creating is using the vector texture tool. Okay, so if I click on that, uh, I can enter some settings in here and the software will automatically create a vector texture for me. So in this case, we're going to go with an angle of zero degrees. So we're just going parallel to the X axis. We're going to have a maximum spacing of 0 0.8 in this case. We're going to go with an amplitude of a quarter of an inch, a wavelength of three inches and then we're going to go ahead and press preview. Okay, so you can see we've got this wave pattern uh, going across the entire part of our job. So we're going to go ahead and press OK. Then we're going to switch back over to our toolpath. We're going to hold down shift and we're going to select the vector there. And then we're just going to go ahead and press calculate. Okay, so you can see that it's just pulled out the vector texture uh, that's just on the bitmap. So it's not cutting over the border area where we had the white space. And then we could go ahead now and press preview. And so you can see we've got a real nice interesting result there. We've got a nice wave pattern and it just kind of jazzes the part up a bit. And if you wanted to, you could then go ahead and run a cutout pass just to cut out uh, the areas uh, that we don't need. So if we do that, we'll switch over to the drawing tab into the 2D view and to draw a rectangle, literally just going to box select it uh, in line with our bitmap. And then we can close out, switch back over. We'll go into the profile toolpath. We're going to cut all the way through our material. We're going to look at using a quarter inch end mill to cut that out on the outside. Press calculate. And then we can preview that just to see how that looks. So it's doing that in a few passes. So ideally I would have looked at uh, the pass step there just to see if I can adjust that. And there you'd have uh, your finished um, photo v-carve using the wave pattern. Okay, so that's one effect. Okay, so you can reset that. And then we're just going to switch back over to our drawing tab, go back into the 2D view here. 
and we're going to look at another example. So if we go to our layers bar at the top, just going to switch off the texture layer and we're just going to click on layer one to make that the active layer. And now I'm going to look at creating um, a heart shape. So we're going to go to our clip art tab. We've got a folder here called 2D Vectors and somewhere here I have panel 20, which is a heart shape. And if I double click on that, you can see it that's been brought into our software and I'm just going to shrink that down ever so slightly and I'm just going to position this somewhere around here. Okay, so this is a quite an interesting effect whereby we can take the heart, I might want to just increase it a little bit more, uh, and then we're going to use the offset tool. I'm going to offset that outwards by 0 0.05. And I'm just going to click on this until it just fills out the entire uh, photograph that we've got there. If I just keep clicking, you'll see it's almost getting to the corners now. And once we've got the corners, we're then ready to take that and use it. Okay, so close out there. So here is my offset pattern. Uh, and then here as well, I'm going to look at bringing some text in. So you want to really just use the Photo VCarve toolpath either just for very simple Photo VCarve strategies or you can combine it with projects to make some really cool gifts. So here I'm just going to type in the word love and we're just going to put that inside of the heart. We'll just shrink that down. Uh, we'll just zoom in there and just move that over to the right. Okay, so that's not too bad. Uh, and then we can use this option here to zoom to fit. We'll close out there and then we'll switch over to the toolpaths tab. And we'll close out, we'll go back into our Photo VCarve toolpath. And then we can just box select uh, all of those vectors. Uh, and we've got our image selected also, but we do not want that text selected there. We're going to look at VCarve in that afterwards. Okay, so using the selected vectors option, let's go ahead and press calculate. And then we'll just go now and preview that. Okay, so it's just going to take the lines and it's going to use that uh, for the actual strategy. And you can see it's creating some really interesting effects there. And then now what we could do is we could go and take that love text, close out, and go into the VCarve toolpath specify the same tool here and then we can just simply give that a name and we'll just call that one love and then press calculate preview that and then we'll just change the toolpath color of that to make that black and then we'll just preview our cutout toolpath also and then here you can see the finished part okay so just delete that waste material maximize that and you can see how effective uh, the selected vectors option really is and so there really is a lot of scope for the selected vectors option within the photo vcarve toolpath and you can be as creative as you like and make use of the many drawing tools that we've got available in the software so you can make use of the vector texture tools, you could look at the array tools and all of the different shapes that you can create. Right then, so let's just close out there. Now in our example, we're machining the entire image. So if we go to the 2D view, uh, we're just going to switch off layer one for the time being. And you'll see that we are making use of the entire image. Now, if you wanted to, you could make use of the bitmap editing and cropping tools if you wanted to restrict the area that you wanted to machine. So let's have a look at that. So we'll switch over to the drawing tab. So with our image selected, let's just go and add in a new layer. And we're just going to call this one feathered effect. And then here we're going to take our image and we're going to go over to the picture editor. So you have lots of different options to alter the contrast, the brightness, the gamma. You can invert the image or put it into a grayscale. We also have this option here to add in a border. You've got a rectangular border that will give you a kind of feathered effect or you've got an oval border. And here you can adjust the width if you wanted to, so increasing that, or we could just decrease it like so. Okay, so I think that looks quite nice. So we'll apply that and then we'll just close out there. 
and we'll go back over to the toolpaths tab and then we'll just double click on to our photo vcarve toolpath and then here we're just going to use the raster strategy we're going to go with a uh, dense line spacing and we'll go at 45 degrees uh, and then we'll just go ahead and press calculate and so what the software will do it will just discard all of the white areas and it will just machine the actual image itself so we can go ahead and press calculate and if we just reset that preview so we can see the oval shape there and then we could go in there and preview that and so we're left with a very desirable effect there and so as I mentioned about the white areas in our image it is worth noting that if you do have an image that has transparent or white areas the toolpath will just know not to include those areas as they needn't be cut Okay, so I like what we've got there. So let's just put that back in C and then we'll just close out there. So here we've shown you how we can create a border on our image. Next up, we're going to look at how we can actually crop our image to a vector. So let's switch over to the design tab. We'll go into the 2D view. And we're just going to use the undo tool just to get our image back to its original state there. Now let's say we wanted to just crop out the people from the image. We didn't want any background at all. Well, you could look at using the trace bitmap options, but sometimes it might just be quicker to actually just sketch in a vector that represents the outline of the things that you want to keep in. So let's go to our layers bar. We're just going to add in a new layer and we're just going to call this one crop. And we're going to look at creating a vector where we're cropping out uh, the two people. So over, we want to right click on the image, we're going to go to object properties and we're just going to uh, reduce the fade in there just so that when I draw my vector around uh, the people uh, that I can see clearly where everything is. So let's just close out there and then we're going to look at using the draw curve tool. So I'm just going to start at the bottom here and we're just going to roughly sketch in place uh, the outline of this person. Okay, so I'm using the curve tool just because it will just uh, auto create beziers. I still will have to go in there just to tidy areas up but um, it won't be as much as if I was using the polyline tool. So here I'm just literally just wanting to get a rough quick sketch in purely for demonstration purposes. So I'll just bring that over to the right down here. And all I'm just doing is just clicking at points where uh, we need to come out or go into the image. Okay. And then we'll just use the tab option to join them. And then with that vector selected, we're going to go into node edit mode. And I'm going to turn that vector into a line. And we're just going to bring that down. I'm going to take that and we'll just take that across there. Okay, so it's not too bad. We'll just delete uh, this node here. Okay, and then just maybe pull that out a little just to smooth it off. And bring it in okay not too much and then take that point and bring that in and then up here we'll just put that away from his head and I want to take that and just bring that out bring this away from his ear and bring that back out again uh, and then round over here seems okay just bring that in and then we'll just take this handle bring that in move that up that's okay hair's not too bad. Um, working our way down, we can take that node and bring that in. We can pull this span down. Might want to actually just bring that node down and adjust that handle that's far too high here. So we'll just bring that down like so and pull that up. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Okay, so F to fit that to screen, right click to just deselect that and right click to come out of node edit mode. So here is our vector and shift and select our bitmap and then come over to this option here to crop the bitmap. Okay, and then what we can do is we can take that and we can just move it over to the right and if we was making uh, an anniversary gift we could just simply go to our text and just type in 
happy anniversary like so and then just move that over to the left or we could position that up there close out and we could look at v carving that in so let's go back over to our tool pass tab double click on the photo v carve option and here we're just going to go with a raster pattern and we're just going to go ahead and calculate that we'll reset that preview and you'll see it's just picked up our cropped vector there uh, sorry our cropped bitmap and then we can preview that tool path so you can see the effect of that there okay so it looks good it kind of looks a little bit better than uh, with the background attached to it and then we can close out and if we just tile our windows we can take the happy anniversary maybe we'll just move it over make it a little bit bigger uh, and then we can go in there with the vcarve toolpath so let's just go in there take what we already have and then we'll calculate that and we'll preview that and then we can run our profile toolpath just to cut that out And then if we maximize our 3D view and just delete our waste material, we can see the end result there. And so that really completes this tutorial where we've looked through all of the options that are available within the Photo VCarve Toolpath strategy. And hopefully you've been inspired to make one of your own using this powerful tool. So thank you for watching.